All right. Hello, hello, hello. So um, good morning, everybody. I know I have 12 minutes, so I'll try and make this pretty quick. I have a ton of slides, so bear with me. I also, before I start, want to say thanks to my co-authors, so Pablo Marco Blanco, uh, Khaled Ahmed, um, Ghassan Aziz, and Eric Fostermore. Oh, and Tom Plaguey, my brilliant software engineer and colleague. So everyone in this room probably knows what a difficult setting is. And to give a bit of context as far as me and my background, um, I started my career as a clinician, um, went to school for stats and then epi, but there's this concept in the US, this rising field of data science and, and this world of being a data scientist. And it could mean you know, a many splendid thing. And in the context of humanitarian aid, what a data scientist is and does hasn't been fully utilized. And when we think about these models of, of data collection and usage and consumption by this world, we think on the academic side where something is, is analyzed and retrospectively sort of uh, mulled over and published and, and that sort of world of the use of data and then the actionable use of data for operations. So if we were to break data apart and into one, operations, and two, academic and, and, and advocacy, that's a good way to look at, at these next 10 minutes of my presentation on the sort of on the operational side of things. So as far as complete data solutions for operations and, and for action, if we were to think about a, a program instead of data as a byproduct, then you incorporate the use of data from the beginning, from the design of a program, whether it's nutrition or mental health or NCD, or an emergency project where you're just providing general care and aid in an outpatient setting, to the collection stage where instead of, you know, a lot of people in this room probably have a lot of field experience where you go out into the field with an emergency project and about three months later someone calls an epi and the epi says, oh, okay, you have 50 Excel spreadsheets all manipulated by a bunch of field docs and nurses and health workers, can you fix our data problem? And that's the norm, it's not the exception. And so. What we find a lot of times is this byproduct of, of, of data usage um, being a big problem. So incorporating that into the design and, and making data its own component of a project instead of, instead of this, this output. And then, of course, the storage of information. So we suffer from it in the nonprofit world, but also in the for-profit space, that they've tried to really eliminate the, the sending of, of identifiable information via email and, and, and biomarkers and all those sorts of things, and actually having a safe repository that meets you know, HIPAA standards and FDA and EU data security. And then the analysis of information. And, and this is another big gap that we face in this context, which is a lot of people use, you know, Tableau or ClickView or, you know, macros on an Excel sheet for interpretation of information that needs to be digested in real time. And you have a lot of issues there from the, manipula the manipulation uh, that can be subjective by Excel sheet to the real time nature of analytics that's needed by field workers, both online and offline and then dissemination by using something new, sort of shifting the way that we, we digest information from one that you're expecting a report on your desk if you're senior management to one where you can just log onto a website and see information coming from the ground in real time. So I'm just gonna scan past this, but a lot of the issues that, that I faced both when I was uh, at WHO and later at MSF was the, the overuse and over-reliance on open source tech, um, which, which caused uh, me to, to, to rely then on consultants and, and a lot of software engineers because I was awful at writing code. And then a lot of the tools out there for, for data management in the humanitarian space focus on collection only, which forces people like me to make my own hack together storage and analytics components. And then on the method side of the fence, having you know, this more complete nature of data usage from program design to analytics in a way that's built into the program was a big deficiency that I faced quite often, um, both at WHO and MSF. So the barriers at field level. Welcome to my life. So, so anyone here that works in, in health informatics feels this pain viscerally, where we have this big problem of, is, this, is, is any of this interoperable? Is one, is one data set here interoperable than another? Probably not, right? So, so this is, a big, this is the, the norm, not the exception. And then, of course, when we get into the field and from facilities into actually, you know, new and, and protracted crises, both in camp and, and in the informal setting, collecting information here in a, in a way that's statistically valid is a pretty difficult task and somewhat daunting, especially as the size of the crises grows. And then, of course, we have these, these issues of not only collecting information at baseline about population needs, but about the procurement and distribution of items that's needed. And all of this information ideally should flow to one singular repository where someone that's making the big decisions can make those decisions in a way that's informed by valid information. And then, of course, there's the population. So all the populations um, have their own 
unique components as far as what the assessment looks like and how to get information both about their current and planned needs as well as barriers to care. And when we think about what's needed on the technology side, and this is pretty important, and to be a bit more, to stir up the pot a little bit. So I am a firm believer in, in using the free market to our advantage as, as humanitarians. So if tech doesn't work for you, you don't need to customize it. You can just buy the stuff that works. And what I mean by that is, if, if I were to look back in my last 10 years of, of working in this field, what I needed anyway was the ability to, to manage my, my data and not have to learn Python or JavaScript or something. And, and to, for that data to be managed from the time I create a program to the time I, I analyze it and give it to the people that have the big money to make the program decisions, because I'm just an epi, I don't, I don't make the big dollar decisions. And then I need to have that user interface at field level, both for the people collecting information and the people that are analyzing it at, at primary school level. So analytics, there's this big chasm between what a provider needs in the field as far as simple table charts and graphs to what is created in, in a lot of the for-profit spaces. You, know, you use a Tableau dashboard, and you can manipulate it, and it does all this cool stuff. And then there's, there's you know, the high-level stat component. And trust me, I love multivariate models as much as the next person. But if I was a field clinician, I just want to know how many patients I had that week, how many died, how many were deferred, and what medications I need to give them. And I need to be able to do that offline. And then, of course, if I'm a manager in an office somewhere, I need to create a project and uh, deploy it to the field, collect my information, view the results in a way that I know the information is stored in a way that meets all compliance. And then I need to be able to, to, to give that information to other people that I'm working with. So what does that look like? A hospitable data model would be nice. Uh, robust API, both internal and external. And then high-level aggregate metadata sharing versus via Firehouse. So what we have a lot of times at MSF, that's a pretty big deficiency, has been uh, the, the ability to use and utilize big data. And that's not being utilized, to, for the most part, to be really basic, because a lot of the, the systems in place at field level are spitting up data that, that sometimes is, is not valid or that cannot be um, interoperable with other data sets across not only one operational center, but across the entirety of MSF. And then, of course, you know, an opt-out data sharing provision, which is actually really important for some context. So um, over the last four years, I've been working on a program called the HSP. Um, the, original, the original iteration was called the HAP, which is the Health, Health Assessment Project. And then uh, later on with MSF OCBA, it was the Health Surveillance Program. And this was the first program that I know of its kind that, that treated data as its own program, just like NCD or mental health. And the objective of the HSP was to provide rapid, actionable information from crisis-affected persons in the region, um, so in the Middle East, uh, to better target current and future interventions. This was the um, objective originally by um, OCG, so MSF Swiss, and later by OCBA, MSF Spain. The pilot was in Becca Valley in 20, actually this is 2013, sorry, typo. And it was in, what we did before we scaled this program is we, we nested this, this new technology and methodology in a larger traditional household survey. And what we found using this new methodology was, was a three times faster time to completion using a specific type of tech designed for this setting. And there were no need, of course, if anyone's used mobile data collection tools, which I hope I don't have to convince anyone that paper is probably not the best you know, way to collect and store and manage information. If not, then I should probably go back in time a few years. But mobile data collection tools are you know, working in a lot of context. And you know, with over 90% of the world having smartphones at this time, I'm, I'm going have to have to pull that card. So you know, smartphones are not just a developed world thing. It's an everywhere thing. And we found um, this interoperability is the, is the biggest takeaway, which is that we could do this assessment there and have the same methodology, same instrument, same uh, data set, so a nice relational database in the back end. And the users in, in Barcelona and in Geneva could query the results regardless of setting um, and actually understand a, a bit more about the crisis in real time. So we did this, this baseline, midline, end line using a, a Google type user study. And I have to scan through this part, but the presentation will be available to you later. And of course, we were able to get real time, epidemiologically valid information from very difficult settings, a lot of places with no connectivity at all. Um, and then MSF was able to pivot faster and, and, and better to the needs of the population as it evolved. And this is, this is now at its third year, second year with MSF Spain. And has been deployed in quite a few countries throughout the Middle East. And this information is available real time via the web from the uh, HSP dashboard. So we looked at all different sorts of stuff, from demographic information to health needs to barriers to care, um, vaccination coverage, mortality, morbidities, 
pediatric illnesses, vaccination coverage, uh, food security, livelihoods, repatriation, water supply and sanitation, and, uh, and, and general migration. And then the way that this looked on the ground was serial cross-sectional assessments, uh, roughly a quite large sample size between six and 8,000 individuals nested in between uh, 11 and 1,200 households, uh, representative of the population of interest by the, by the um, operational center, and uh, collected in trend. So the actors can actually um, assess whether or not the population evolution is, is valid or not. So mobile data collection tools were used, and let me actually skip ahead to what those look like. So we used uh, tech, it's called Dharma, and you know, full disclosure, I, I met Dharma um, because I believe in it. And I am sick of, of using the over 200 uh, tools that I tried and tested while I was at these other organizations and frustrated with. And what Dharma allowed me to do was collect information wholly offline, to track my staff offline, to view results offline, and to, to actually manage my project um, via something called a mesh network. Then, of course, if there was one bar of connectivity, everything went to a, um, to a three-layer encrypted database that was, uh, for anyone that's tech-savvy, uh, multi-node Postgres backend, so a Django um, backend that allowed me to actually have these actors access a really simple web dashboard where they can view results both geographically and across time. And these results were displayed as simple graphs, charts, and tables and available in real time if one bar of Wi-Fi or GSM was available on the web. But again, real time offline on mobile, real time web if there was one bar of Wi-Fi or GSM. They could also view their indicators um, and, and all indicators above threshold, pinged red, and track their staff. So you could see where the staff were by hour, by minute, by day. And uh, most recent, uh, 6,455 interviews in a five day period, um, many in, in North Babel, um, and this was done I don't know, a little, little less than two months ago. And throughout the Middle East, so Iraq um, and other sites, I don't know how many I can name just for a variety of reasons, but uh, throughout the Middle East, a bunch of countries, I think five countries and counting, as well as now being in use um, by other organizations like uh, the World Health Organization. 